In this video, we're going to talk about continuous functions, also known as continuity. And a continuous function is essentially a function on a graph that you can draw without lifting your pen off the ground. It's a very informal definition of continuity, but it's sufficient enough for you to get the general idea of what we're talking about here. So here's a formal definition of continuity. We say that f is continuous at a point a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. So what this means is that if we take a point on the graph, let's say a, then it should correspond to the point on the curve or the point on the function. So this actually implies three things that we need to talk about. One, it means that f of a is defined. So if there was a hole in the graph at f of a, let's say there's a hole right there, then clearly it wouldn't be continuous because there would be a hole at that position. Whoops, that graph is gone. So if there's a hole there, then obviously it wouldn't be defined there. It might be defined somewhere up here. All right. Number two, the limit of f of x as x goes to a must exist, obviously, because if it didn't exist, then there would simply be a hole and nothing else on the graph. And of course, number three would be our starting condition that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. So you want to check all three of these conditions in order to make sure that the function is actually continuous. So we're going to jump straight into an example for this one. And we're going to talk about the function f of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 2 over x minus 2. So it should be apparent that looking at the denominator, if x is equal to 2, then the function is not defined. In fact, that would be 4 minus 2 minus 2, you'd get 0 over 0. So it would be discontinuous at 2. And it's as simple as that because the function is not defined at 2 then it's discontinuous at 2. So in our next example, we're going to say, well, you know, if f of 2 isn't defined, maybe we can give it a definition. So I'll write that uh, f of 2 not defined for our first one. We're going to say the same function, we're going to call it g of x, and it is going to be equal to x squared minus x minus 2 over x minus 2 if x is not equal to 2, but it's going to equal 1 if x is equal to 2. So now we have this defined. So if we take g of 2, it is going to be equal to 1. Okay, so our first condition is met. g of a is defined, in which case g of 2 is a. So does the limit exist? Okay, well, if we take the limit from the right, in fact, let's move down a little bit so we can write this. The limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus x minus 2 over x minus 2, that's 2 from the right, is equal to, well, we'll factor out the top, which is x minus 2, x plus 1 over x minus 2. The two x minus 2s cancel, so we'll get the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of x plus 1, which is equal to 3. And in fact, I'll skip a bunch of steps, and if uh, the limit comes to 2 from the left, it is also going to be equal to 3. Okay, so have we found a continuous function by giving it this extra condition? And the answer to this one is also no, because the limit as x goes to 2 of our function has to equal the point at 2 in the function. But we know that this is equal to 3, and g of 2 is equal to 1, and these two are not equal, so the function is still discontinuous at x equals 2. So this is what is called a removable discontinuity. And it is removable because we can define g of 2 to equal 3. Because the limit exists, we can say, well, let's just define g of 2 to equal 3, and then the limit will match the point at g of 2, and then it's removable because then the function is completely continuous. So it would have a graph that's continuous. 
Now there are two more types of discontinuities. Um, there's an infinite discontinuity, which is drawn when it goes to infinity or negative infinity at some point, like the function 1 over x, or another function 1 over x squared, that both the sides go to infinity at zero. So these are infinite discontinuities. These are not removable because you can't simply define, oh, when x is equal to zero, this is zero, or this is one, because it goes to infinity. You can't necessarily pick a single point. And there's another type of discontinuity called jump discontinuities. And these are graphs where it's not divided at a point, but then it goes up and then kind of has a stepladder like appearance to it. This is a very basic jump discontinuity. There's also another one that could simply just look like a curve at some point, a piecewise function that then does some weird twists and turns, but is never actually continuous. And you can tell these are continuous just by looking at the graphs because you have to pick up your pen to draw it. And that is good enough of a definition that uh, it's pretty easy to figure out if a graph is continuous or not. But if you want to find out if a graph is continuous formally, you should definitely look over these three criteria right here because this is the formal definition of continuity. So with that, I will pose a practice problem. And once I write it, you can pause the video and see if you can figure it out by yourself. I actually have two today. So number one, it, you're going to show me if this function is continuous or not. f of x is equal to x plus 2x cubed, all fourth, and we want a to equal negative 1. And our second question is going to be f of x is equal to, it's a nice piecewise function, cosine of x when x is less than 0, 0 when x is equal to 0, and 1 minus x squared when x is greater than 0. So the second question is, is it continuous? And if not, why? And the first question is just show if it is continuous. Find the limit as x approaches negative 1. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try these questions out. So number one, we simply plug in the limit as x goes to negative 1 of our function x plus 2x cubed to the 4 is going to be, well, we can just plug x equals negative 1 into the equation and we can see what we get. So that's negative 1 plus 2 times negative 1 cubed all to the 4th, which is negative 1. Well, negative 1 to the 3rd is negative 1, so plus 2 times negative 1 is minus 2 all to the 4th which is equal to negative 3 to the 4th, which is positive 81. So because the function is continuous, we can find the limit, and we know that the limit is the same thing of f of, what do we have here? f of, yeah, f of negative 1. You just plug f of negative 1 in there, and it's the limit. And this satisfies the condition that the limit as x goes to negative 1 of f of x is equal to f of negative 1. So perfect, we know it's continuous. Second question is a little bit more difficult. Well, what are the conditions here? We need to know that the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x is equal to f of 0. So what is f of 0? f of 0 is equal to 0. Okay, so let's check to see if the limit equals that. Well, we'll take the limit as x goes to 0 from the left, and when it comes from the left, x is going to be less than 0, so we take cos x. And what is cos of 0? Cos of 0 is equal to 1. If you remember on a unit circle, this point here is the same thing as 1, 0, which we have cosine theta, sine theta, as far as coordinates on a unit circle. So this equals 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is going to be the same as 1 minus x squared. And 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. So here we have a minor problem because the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x is equal to 1. But f of 0 is equal to 0. So there is a discontinuity in this equation. 
And because we've shown that the limit and the function evaluated at zero are different, the function is clearly discontinuous. Is it removable or not? You can figure that on your own and see if you can find a solution where we can make this function continuous. In fact, I can propose a very easy solution. We just say when x equals zero, then we say that f of zero is equal to one and bam, the function is now continuous. There is your answer to fix the function.